Welcome to Wicked Printing Stuff's screen printing tutorial for beginners. This is an overview of the screen printing process itself. Screen printing can seem confusing, complex and messy to the beginner. However, we hope this tutorial will help you see that it can be made easy. For more information on screen printing, please visit our website www.wickedprintingstuff.com In particular, our buyer's guide and FAQ section, which are likely to be helpful to you. Firstly, you will need to decide how you are going to produce your artwork. If you are creating your own, you can use an artwork package such as Illustrator, Photoshop, Coral Draw, or you can hand draw your artwork. There are important factors to consider when designing artwork for a screen printing purpose. How many colours do you intend to print? How many colours does your press allow you to print? The Wicked Printing Stuff presses are available in one, two, four and six colours, including our upgradable allowing you to print up to the maximum number of colours of your chosen press, i.e. a six colour press allows for a one, two, three, four, five or six colour design. If you have a multi-coloured image, you will need to separate your image into layers on your artwork package, so it can transpose to different colours on your printing press. Each layer must be created separately when you have completed your artwork in order for you to expose each separate colour onto different screens. Don't forget to add registration marks when creating your layers. This will enable you to line up your colours on your platen. A basic cross and circle will work in each corner of your image. Today we will be printing a one colour design. However, if you were to change this design to a two colour, for example, with Wicked Printing Stuff being one colour and our website another colour, you need to create two layers for each colour and add your registration marks to show on each layer. Once you have created your artwork, it's now time to print them onto film positives. You can choose either ghosted vellum or clear transparencies. Intricate designs such as four colour process and large A3 size jobs with tight alignment will need a clear transparency film positive. Wicked Printing Stuff supply transparency film specifically for inkjet or laser printers, both A4 and A3. For most screen printing jobs, Vellum paper, when used correctly, is good and more economical for the starter printer. If choosing vellum for one colour prints, a laser or inkjet printer are both suitable. However, when producing a two or more coloured print, we recommend an inkjet printer. Most inkjet printers can print a vellum image dark enough to burn a screen. You just need to make sure you adjust the printer setup dialog to attain an adequate amount of ink lay down. Set the paper type to very absorbent, such as plain paper. We suggest you do not choose a vellum or transparency setting. If your printer has a black only setting, select this option. When selecting your screen size, you will need to take into account the size of your artwork, what size screens your press will take, and any storage issues you may have in your working area. Once you have selected your screen, you will need to select a mesh count. The mesh count will depend what substrate you are printing onto, what ink you are printing with, and how detailed your artwork is. The mesh counts can range from 15T, which would be used for glitter printing, or highly absorbent surfaces, to a 200T, which would be used for extremely fine and intricate lines, hand drawing and photographic work. The most popular textile mesh count for garment printing with either water-based or plastisol ink are between 32T and 65T mesh and a mesh 7070 and upwards would be advised for paper and card printing with a water-based ink. We have chosen a yellow 43T mesh today, although white would be fine also. We have picked a 20 by 24 inch screen, as our logo fits nicely inside with 2 to 3 inches either side, which is a nice amount of room for our squeegee. Before you coat your screen, you must degrease it first. This removes any unwanted dust, inks and chemicals from your mesh, possibly left from your previous job, for better bond of your emulsions. Wicked Printing Stuff Degreaser has a fresh odour and is ecologically sound and drain safe. Dilute your degreaser one part degreaser and 50 parts water. Wet your screen first on both sides. Apply the degreaser with a cloth and using a screen cleaning brush scrub both sides. Then wash out with water using a hose. Leave the screen to completely dry in front of a fan or in a drying rack. You now need to prepare the emulsion. Today we are using multi-purpose Diazo Dual Cure Emulsion. 
We find that it provides good stencil build per cost, is fast drying and has excellent durability. A popular, reliable emulsion. Your emulsion is a two-part. The blue emulsion liquid is in the larger pot and green sensitizer powder is in the small pot. Dissolve the Diazo sensitizer powder by adding distilled or lukewarm water. You can use cooled water from your kettle and fill it up to the line of the pot. Shake well. Then wait 15 minutes for the bubbles to disperse. Pour the fully dissolved sensitizer into the emulsion and stir. Close the pot and wait for at least an hour for the emulsion to debubble. If you do not wait, air bubbles will pop and leave small gaps in your coated screen. Your emulsion will turn from blue to green when sensitized. Once exposed, it will turn back to blue on white mesh and turquoise on yellow mesh. It is now time to coat your screen. Fill your coating trough with the now fully sensitized emulsion. Start with coating the flat side. Start at the bottom of your screen and gently press the trough to the mesh. Tilt slightly until you have an even straight line of emulsion touching the mesh. Pressing firmly now, slide the trough to the top. As you reach the top, tilt the trough back and away from your screen. If you are a beginner and feel you may not have an even coat, tilt your trough towards you and perform an even scoop quickly and gently back across your screen. Now repeat on the print side. There are many coating methods and it is down to personal printing preference. The type of printing jobs a screen printer has will determine his preference. The less coats you perform, the less of an inkwell is created, thus meaning less of an ink deposit on your garment. Allow the screen to dry for approximately four to six minutes on each side with a fan heater. Turn your screen 180 degrees, ensuring each half of the screen dries. The emulsion will change from glossy to matte when dry. We suggest not using a heating device such as a heat gun or hairdryer. This heat is non-consistent and may contain light elements. It is now time to expose your image onto your screen. Most screen printers more often than not get this wrong the first time. Don't worry, just persist and you'll get there. There are many different exposure unit setups on the market, each having different light sources. UV, halide and halogen being popular in the UK. We are going to show you how to expose your screen with a Wicked Printing Stuff exposure unit, which has a 1000 watt halogen light source. With your unit, you will receive two pieces of foam. You need to place your small foam on the floor between your star base. As our screen is 20 by 24 inches, a large sized foam sits on top. Make sure the mesh and foam are sitting flush with one another. Place your screen print side down over the foam with the protruding edge facing down. Next, you will need to position your artwork on your screen. Flip your film over and place on your coated screen. You will need a piece of glass to sit on top of your unit. This will create the secure contact with the foam to create a sharp, consistent exposure. We recommend a sheet of glass between 5mm, which should be double glazed, or up to 10mm single glazed. Please note that the glass needs to be larger than your screen. Measure a distance of 20 inches between the glass and the lamp. The height of the unit can be adjusted, so if you are exposing different size screens, you can decrease or increase the distance between the light and the glass. Expose for 15 minutes. We now need to immediately wash out our screen. Wet the screen on both sides. Apply medium pressure to your hose and spray the flat side of the screen. Your image will have burned into the emulsion and you will start to see the image as the emulsion breaks down. Now wash the other side down. There are some obvious signs if your screen is over or underexposed. If your emulsion breaks up from your screen in places it shouldn't have, you have underexposed it and need to increase your exposure time. If your logo is not clearing with water or is still ghosted once washing down, you have overexposed and should decrease your time or distance. Once your logo is clear, soak up any excess water with newspaper and dry with a fan heater for a few minutes either side, turning your screen 180 degrees on each side. If you have any imperfections, use screen filler to fix these. Tape around the edge of your screen. You are now ready to begin printing. Firstly, you need to set your screen up on your press. You must adjust your screen before fully tightening it into place. You need to ensure your logo is in the right place for your garment. We want our design in the centre of the t-shirt, so we place and tape our artwork onto our platen where we wish the logo to fall. 
Then line your logo on the screen up with the logo on your artwork. This is fairly straightforward as we are only printing one colour and do not need to be precise. However, when you are lining up a two or more colour image, you would use the registration marks explained earlier in the video to help you achieve exact registration. Tape all your layers together, matching up the registration marks and tape it as a whole to your platen. You can then adjust your screens to line up with your reg marks. This will ensure that all colours of your logo register down in the correct place, print after print. If you're printing with a Wicked Printing Stuff press, in order to achieve micro-registration, enabling each colour of your design to line up exactly with the next, adjust the second set of hand wheels to move the entire clamp head to any angle and position you desire. That leads us back onto today's print. We now need to ensure that your screen is level and at the right height. As we are printing with a dark ink, the screen should sit about one eighth of an inch above your shirt. Adjust the orange lever to achieve this. If you are printing with white ink onto a dark garment such as black, it may benefit to decrease the off contact and apply less pressure to the squeegee. Apply textile spray or roll onto your platen before you place your shirt. It will be impossible to produce a clean, precise print without holding your garment in place. The Wicked Printing Stuff Roll-On Platen Adhesive can be applied onto the platen using either a brush, paint roller or via a spray system. The most economical way to use a platen adhesive is to apply a thin layer using a paint roller. Allow the adhesive to dry for 5-10 to 10 minutes by air or a few seconds under the flash dryer. You will be able to print over 200 garments before the glue loses its adhesion. It is possible to reactivate the adhesive during your print run by spraying or wiping the platen with water and drying as before. You are now ready to print. Which ink have you chosen? Plastisol or water-based? Plastisol inks are most commonly used as they are extremely opaque and dense, and once printed leave a rather 3D rubbery feel to the print. They sit on top of the fibres in your garment. They will also need to be heat cured using a flash dryer or tunnel dryer and will require cleaning solvents such as screen wash to remove the ink from the screen. Water-based inks dye the fibres of the fabric and are great for dark onto light printing as the opacity of the ink will not be affected as much by the bleed of the garment. Once printed, the garment is left feeling soft and the ink has a rather non-existent feel. As water-based inks are an air-dry ink, they do not require heat to dry, though it is recommended to fully cure the print. Water-based ink will wash off your screen with water, so no need for solvent cleaners. It is always a good idea when printing to keep certain tools such as palette knives and mixing sticks readily available. We have chosen to use Plastisol ink for our print today. As you can see, our printer is using a palette knife to transfer the ink from the pot to the screen. It is advised that you put the ink on the furthest side of the design on your screen. There are two main blades of squeegee to choose from one being a D-cut, also known as a V-cut, and the other a square cut blade. A D-cut blade is usually reasonably soft as the blade puts down a good deposit of ink. A lot of printers use the D-cut blade, ideal for printing light onto dark, block or bold printing. The square cut blade is often used for achieving good definition and sharp lines. We can supply various different square cut blades which range from soft, medium, hard and extra hard. Today our printer will be using a D-cut squeegee as our design does not have any intricate detail and we want to put a nice deposit of ink. Lift your screen roughly an inch above your platen and flood your image. Lower your screen. It is advised to hold your squeegee with both hands with a medium to hard grip. Tilt your squeegee at 15 degrees away from you and draw the squeegee firmly across the screen. If preferred you can also draw the squeegee towards you. Our printer prefers to draw the squeegee away from him as he feels it is more controlled and allows more pressure. Apply one or two coats of ink if required. Place your squeegee at the far end of your screen, resting against the head and lift your screen to reveal your finished printed design. It is now time to dry and cure your print. If you are printing more than one coat of ink for the same image, or printing a multicolour image, you will need to flash cure your ink by using a flash dryer or heat gun between each print. Once your print is dry to the touch, you can apply your second coat or next colour. Once you have finished your print, you will need to fully cure your garment. Simply drying the print does not mean that your garment is machine washable. In other words, the print will come out in the wash. 
Most Plastisol inks cure at 153 degrees. Wicked printing stuff water-based inks need to be cured at 180 degrees if a catalyst is not added. You can use a flash dryer, heat press or tunnel conveyor dryer for this. If you were using a Wicked printing stuff flash dryer to cure your print, we recommend you measure the temperature of your print with a digital laser thermometer until it reaches the required temperature. In this instance, 153 degrees. Depending on the nature of your fabric, it is recommended that you break this up into intervals of approximately 10 to 15 seconds and repeat three to five times, as most garments cannot withstand such continuous heat in one go. If you are a busy printer, you will find that a conveyor tunnel dryer is a much quicker, more efficient and reliable way of curing prints. We always say here at Wicked Printing Stuff, the only definitive test to determine if inks are fully cured is a wash test. That is, washing the garment in hot water with a strong detergent. Of course, don't ignore the washing instructions of your garment. If the print is undercured, the print will show deterioration after only one to three washes. It is now time to clean down your screen. Firstly, scoop up any ink that can be saved and put it back into your pot. If you wish your screen to have a long and happy life, we recommend that you wash it down after every print run. As water-based inks dry on the screen, you must clean it down straight away or your mesh will clog. For this, simply use water. To clean Plastisol ink from your screen, you will need a dry cotton cloth and some screen wash. Apply a generous amount of screen wash to the cloth and rub with pressure. The screen wash will dissolve the ink. You must be in a well-ventilated room to use high-strength screen wash. You could also try dilutable biodegradable screen wash that has a low odour and contains less harmful chemicals to the printer and environment. Once all ink has been removed, dry with a clean dry cloth. Your screen can be used over and over again if stored safely. To reclaim your screen back to its original state by removing the emulsion completely, you will need stencil strip, a screen cleaning brush and a power washer. Wicked Printing Stuff stencil strip must be diluted one part stencil strip to 30 parts water. Remove the tape from your screen. Brush the stencil strip liberally onto both sides of your screen. You should see your emulsion breaking up at this point. If your screen is old or your emulsion stubborn, leave to stand for one minute or so and then hose down with your power washer. Cold water will be fine for this. You are now ready to degrease and start again.